How do I find clients who are interested in what I do? This is a big question I get a lot from people who are taking the leap from their nine to five to becoming self-employed. Now, getting your first client and getting enough clients to sustain your business is a really important piece to feel good about. It's what makes you feel confident that you have a real business that is financially fulfilling to you. But so many people have fears like thinking they're not good at sales or believing that they have to be extroverted to market their business. So in today's video, I'm going to unpack how selling what you do can feel more easeful and explore ways that you can share your work to attract soulmate customers to work with you. I'm Lydia Lee, the work reinvention coach and solopreneur strategist at Screw the Cubicle. In the last decade, I've been helping corporate professionals leave their nine to five to start a business they love by repurposing the gifts and experience that already exists within them. So if you're someone that's going through a career change, you're interested in launching a solopreneurship business and creating more lifestyle freedom in your life, you are in the right place. Be sure to hit the notification button and the subscribe button to be the first to know when I release new videos every single month on this channel. So I wanna start with one of the most important pieces of being able to stand out in your business and be seen for what you do when there's other people doing what you do as well, right? A lot of us can get kind of scared that there's competitors out there, there's other people who do what I do. How do I stand out in the sea of sameness? And one of the biggest, most important, strongest piece that someone else cannot duplicate and someone else will never have that sort of thumbprint of uniqueness to what you have is your point of view, your POV, right? Your point of view comes from your history of your life story. It comes from the way you observe the world and your perspective about the problems in the world that you want to be, uh, to be solving. And it really gives this inner look at who you are as the person and the human behind the business. That is what people want to trust. And the one thing that you can really showcase that builds your credibility. Credible, incredible. Wow. Now, when you look at your services or the products you offer, it's very likely that there's other businesses offering the same thing, right? So holding really tall, right? And confident in your point of view is gonna be so important to utilize so much in your marketing and in the way you talk about your work, so much more than just talking about the packaging or the thing that you sell the most. People wanna know what's really behind the purpose of why you do what you do. So your point of view are your beliefs, your philosophies, your perspective and viewpoint about the problem that you're solving for your clients. Now, one of the my most favorite um, you know, sayings about point of view marketing comes from Tad Hargrave from Marketing for Hippies. And he says, if they don't trust, as in they, your clients, don't trust your diagnosis, they will not trust your prescription, right? So they need to be able to resonate with your point of view of how you believe it's the best ethical, morally, you know, values aligned way to help them so that if they too have those values, right, choosing you as the person to invest in is a no-brainer for people. So how do you find your point of view, right? One of the big questions I like to sometimes ask myself is what is my most unpopular opinion about my industry, right? Some of the things that I believe in at Screw the Cubicle, for example, is that not everyone shouldn't just start any business. I know that a lot of my clients come in and they're always looking externally about what's that idea that's going to be great to monetize? How do I emulate someone else that's making a lot of money? Or how do I conform to the same kind of coaching practice or nutritional coaching you know, business or course out there? And then making myself mirror that thing out there instead of actually finding out how do I really want to do this work and how do I want to create a model of work that really fulfills me and therefore gives and contributes my best work to my clients, right? That internal work first before we do some of the businessy stuff of marketing, business model offers, right? That to me, my unpopular opinion is that until you do that deep work, until you get to know yourself in what is your meaningful work, you know, ingredients, it's going to be really hard for you to sustain a business just solely on profit, right? My belief is about purpose and profit and there's a different destination, if you will, right, that I reach with my clients to, in order to sustain a business that I know they'll love for years to come. So another unpopular opinion I have is that I think tiny businesses are the new future. I don't believe in sort of big empires. I'm not saying that's the wrong thing to do, but I also think that there's a group of people 
in the world that might be just like me who actually value the currency of time, currency of flexibility. Um, that's not just about profit constantly, that yes, we need to get paid. Yes, we want to earn a good living, but how we do it in conjunction with how we want to live our lives and deal with our day to day, right? In, in our working lives is as important as making money, right? So I'm saying bigger is not always better. Bigger is not always better. Right, that's the unpopular opinion because every other successful guru out there is saying for us to always get bigger businesses, launch more products, do more things. I'm the anti do more thing girl. <laughs> so I'm not gonna attract all the people in the marketplace, but I might attract a very, very sh small group of niched people who are also believing in that same thing. So being able to be vocal about that belief for me will sort of deter powerfully those people who don't belong to my community and invite right the people that really want that kind of lifestyle business tiny but mighty business as well so that's an example of an unpopular opinion um, another way to find your pov is what have you observed in your industry that makes you angry or ragey <laughs> i find that things that we are frustrated about that we're like oh my god i wish people would hear a different message that piece is the, the piece that you want to be holding on to to be talking about most because what enrages you is also on the other side of the coin what you're most passionate about right so think about what you've observed in your industry that you're like that doesn't have to be done that way at all i think there's a better way to do that i think there's a better outlook or viewpoint that i think more people should hear about that's the thing to stand in your soapbox to share a lot in your business um another question to ask is what's that one thing you know could make the biggest transformation for your clients if only they knew what that is right and so for me in my business i know that if people understood what that formula for the sweet spot for meaningful work is which i have a whole venn diagram for if you've seen some of my, my other videos they would achieve that sense of proudness with their work which then will fuel their purpose to continue to drive that work and do better work in the world right so if i can help people do that one thing and get to that one answer I know it makes a huge difference in how people will continue to build a business that they care about, right? And I teach that often in hundreds of different ways so that that point really hits the note for people. So what is your one thing? What's that big transformation information that you would love to share with your clients and know that it would really change the game in how they get to their goals in a much more easeful, simplified, whatever's your value system, you know, way uh, that gets people listening. And lastly, what's your story? How have you made your own mistakes? How have you been able to find the truth for what you believe in today, right? In your work, that's what's behind your work. Being able to share that origin story, being able to share your, your process of how you made and stumbled, made mistakes and stumbled along the way and found a pathway that really aligns with what you care about, that's also going to really draw in people that are struggling with those same things and really resonate with your point of view to do things differently, right? So think about those questions, reflect on those questions, and I would love to get you to comment underneath this video and share one, of, one piece of your point of view that could really help bring in some of the clients that would really resonate with that viewpoint as well. Another big piece and ingredient for standing out with your unique value proposition, which is why your clients would choose you instead of somebody else who might be doing similar work, is to really hone in on what I call your signature framework, which is your unique roadmap to, for solving your client's problems, right? That has a lot of your point of view stuff we just spoke about infused into the process and journey that you take your clients on, right? Um, your, your clients are always buying, they're not buying your time and they're not just buying results. They're buying a system that gets them to those results, feeling good about that journey without sacrificing their well-being, without sacrificing or betraying their values, right? Things that are really important in their value system. That's your system? That's my system. <laughs> so being able to showcase your steps and the approach you take, right, for the solution that honors what they care about and what's important to them, that's going to be a huge trust building factor for your clients to choose your program or your courses or your services that may not be what other people might be helping them do in the way that you're doing it, right? So how do you lead your clients 
to the big goal of what is the obvious thing they came to you for, right? With the sort of mini milestones up that mountain, right? That you've crossed along the way. It's never a one step thing to get people to powerful transformation, right? There's probably several steps that you take to go from A to B to help people go from the before state of where they're at to the after experience of where you want them to be, right? So being able to showcase all of this in your marketing before people even start to take a look at your offer, that's what you're doing to educate and plant the seed, right? For what is a better journey to take that's gonna help you get there faster than you thought was possible or help you get there in a way that makes you feel good, right? On, on the way to getting there. So you can be sharing a lot of these frameworks in your content, in um, an infographic, right? Um, in a way that, um, maybe like a webinar or a mini training that educates people on the step. You know, I have a workshop, for example, called the four keys to launch a business you love. You can check it out on my website, by the way, if you're interested in that, in that training that walks people through my entire signature framework of my offer, right? My best work that helps people create the best transformation. So educating people, on these, the elements of your roadmap will help them to diagnose themselves on what step they're missing. What are they not thinking about? And that's really going to help people be drawn to your work, right? Um, that is not going to be salesy. It's going to be like educational marketing that really helps them to know what they're missing, what they can upskill on, what is the gap of information or gap of mindset, right? That needs to be, you know, strengthened in order for them to get to their results in a, in, in a much more easeful way, right? Whatever is the, the ingredient that of values that you want to infuse into the approach to get to that goal. So if you haven't yet understood your own signature framework, you're just telling clients about the great, you know, result that you can get, but not teaching them like reverse engineering how you get them there, right? In smaller steps. I want you to really think about what are the core steps you take, core process, non-negotiable steps that you, every single client has to go through in order to achieve the results you imagine for them. I want you to just outline that, write that out, and really think about how do I teach each of those steps in a mini way that's gonna help plant the seed for my clients to be ready for my work. So once you have honed in on your point of view and your signature framework, right, which is your unique roadmap to help your clients get from A to B, um, what do you do with all that information? How do you now to start showcasing, right, um, all this to in your marketing? So I'm a big believer in what I call show and tell marketing, not just to tell people how great we are <laughs> and how great our work will be or how transformative our work will be, but to show the evidence of that work, to show people that you can help them achieve something small, as many win in clarity or information right from the get-go before people put their credit card down and invest in your program. Um, be generous about your information because again, people are buying the system. People are gonna be buying the accountability, the support, the mentorship. They're not just buying information and content. They can buy a book and buy a you know DIY course to do that if they want to. Um, what they're gonna be buying is so much more than just content. So don't be afraid to be generous about sharing what you know, right? From the get-go for people who haven't even invested just yet. And showcasing our personal business. So show, show and tell is about share, sharing and showcasing your abilities um, in the way that you're gonna get paid to do it. So for example, if you get, you get paid to be a coach like me, your marketing should be about coaching people, right? Being able to create experiences in your, your newsletters, your YouTube videos, like what you're watching today, uh, to your social media, right? IGTV, whatever's your jam for social media, it should showcase you coaching as much as possible, right? It might be things like even invitations, uh, to discovery sessions or invitations to webinars where you may put someone on a hot seat and coach them right live on a stream right showcase your abilities if you are an educator if you're a course creator showcase some of your course creation magic by giving people a little mini challenge course right showcase a little piece of your framework in a five-day challenge, for example. If you're more of a producer-style business brain, like you're someone that's behind the scenes, producing stuff for people, 
you kind of like actually analyzing, assessing the problem first and then giving advice, for example. Like I have a lot of introvert clients who are producer brains, who are web designers, copywriters, for example. Um, a great way to show and tell, right, uh, your work is to do little mini audits, for example, for clients, right? You, people could submit their website, their homepage to be, give them a five minute audit on a screen share as a way of sharing your skills, sharing how you assess, right? Really bad websites, <laughs> for example, and get people interested in your point of view as you go through some of those screen share audits, for example, right? So many, many cool ways, many creative ways to show and tell your work, but don't hide that from the world, right? Don't, don't only show the brilliance of who you are, until you get paid, right? That to me is not good marketing. That to me is not going to help you draw in the people that can really see and trust you from the beginning and will will want to invest in you once they are able to see your abilities. So how do people check you out before they buy? What platforms are most um, beneficial for you to use that are in alignment with your personality type and your comfort zone and how you want to share your work? For me, it's video. I'm just a better, you know, it's more easeful for me to talk out my ideas to coach, you know, via video or via audio. So that's usually the majority of my marketing um, strategies, if you will, right? Um, to be able to share my work and show and tell. So think about what is that thing, right? That you get paid to do, the, the main job, and how can you use more of that into your marketing to create more credibility and trust for your clients before they start investing in you? Okay, we'd love for you to share that in the comments below this video as well. All right, we talked about a lot today uh, and I want to check in with you on what was your biggest aha moment? What's your biggest takeaway from this video that you would love to implement and execute after this video? Please share that with me in the comments. Thank you so much for joining me today. I will see you in the next video. Oh, and one more thing before you leave. If you would like to learn my point of view and what my signature framework is and how I bring my clients from overwhelmed of launching a business into launching a business confidently with work they love, you might want to check out how I show and tell my expertise and my point of view in my free workshop called The Four Keys to Launch a Business You Love. I'll put the links in the descriptor and in the cards above this video. I hope to see you there. Thank you.